Hey guys, welcome back on the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Aave, which is a crypto lending protocol that allows anyone to deposit their crypto, earn yield on it, and if you wanna borrow against it, so you will use your own crypto as collateral with no KYC, no bureaucracy, you get your loan in a matter of minutes. And this is one of the many reasons why crypto is light years ahead of traditional finance. And crypto is going to take over, guys. I'm just here showing you the many advantages that it has over the traditional financial system. So these are all the borrowing and lending protocols listed here on DeFi Lama. We can see that Aave is one of the biggest protocols. Even in the previous screen, we could see that among all types of protocols, Aave is the one with the highest amount of TVL. Aave is battle tested and you can see that they are operating in all of these 17 chains, which brings a lot of exposure to different markets, but also shows you how battle-tested and security-hard this protocol is. There are others you can use. If you go here to the category of lending, you'll see all the other borrow and lending protocols available on crypto. Depending on which blockchain you're talking about, there will be ones which are dominant. For example, Camino is a great one on Solana. Vinos is a great one on the BNB chain. Down here, Suiland and Navi are great on Sui. Hyperland is great on Hyperliquid. And you get the idea, right? The thing about Aave is that they're one of the biggest because they are one of the oldest and they operate in plenty of these well-known blockchains such as Ethereum, Ethereum Layer 2s. And I'm going to show you how to take a crypto loan with Aave in a matter of minutes. And the side of the things that I just mentioned, one of the coolest things about crypto loans is that you don't have to sell your crypto. So you will manage to finance yourself without having the need to declare capital gains because you're not selling, you're just borrowing against your own assets, okay? So let's go ahead here on Aave.com, click open app and I'll start showing you how in practice all of this works. So first and foremost, you gotta connect your wallet. You see there's a connect wallet button, you can come here, select the wallet of choice. I'm gonna connect with Rabi and now I need to select which blockchain I want to use these borrowing and lending features on. They are present in 17 blockchains. You choose the one that you have your funds in and you start borrowing and lending like so. I'm gonna be using the BNB chain. If you're wondering about what these V3 and V2 options are, go with V3, this is the latest, and you'll get great options still in this one, okay? So let's go with it. And what I'm going to do now, you see that my wallet balance has $50 worth of this stablecoin USDT. So I could go ahead and supply this USDT and then borrow against it. There will be different APYs depending on the crypto asset you are holding. If you're holding stablecoins, probably you'll get a better deal with USDC. So if you're looking to earn yield on your idle crypto assets instead of having them sitting in your wallet and in the case of having stable coins I could potentially swap this for USDC and earn more than 4% which is a significant boost compared with USDT okay. So I'm just throwing this out there so that you understand all the potentials that this platform offers. So if I would be looking to supply a stable coin, this would probably be the best option. Also, FDUSD is looking really good with over 10% APY. But there's a difference. Depending on the reputability of stable coins and other crypto, they will have different APYs, of course. But some things that do impact this APY is, for example, the demand. How much are people borrowing from this supply here on Aave? If they're borrowing a lot, then the APY will increase. And also note, for example, we're looking here at Bitcoin, BTC being the case, because we are on the Binance Smart Chain. This is a tokenized version of Bitcoin. It's issued by Binance. And this gives you a really low APY because Bitcoin is the big cryptocurrency. So there's going to be lower risk. And because of that lower risk, the APY will also be much lower. But if you wanna earn pure yield on your Bitcoin on the Binance Smart Chain, this is going to be a good option, okay? So for example, I wanna go here, I wanna supply my USDT, right? But then again, I just look through what they're offering and I see USDC and this one has a much higher APY. So I could come here to the three dot button and click switch. Switch will allow me to swap funds from within the Aave dashboard and I could swap my USDT for USDC. So make sure that you are on the proper blockchain, right? Because right now this is on Ethereum. But if I switch up to Binance, now it's giving me this warning here. So I need to go to my Ravi wallet and I need to, instead of having Ethereum, 
click on the Binance Smart Chain icon and now I'm connected to Binance. So I'm gonna go here, click on USDC because I wanna swap my USDT for USDC. I want the best yield, right? It's virtually the same that I'm about to receive. I'm gonna pay this amount for gas. It's going to be an estimation, but it gives you an idea. I'm gonna click approve to continue. Sign in the transaction in my wallet. Click confirm. Now I'm gonna go in clip swap. Click sign. Okay, so I traded. You can do this elsewhere in a decentralized exchange, for example, but for the sake of conveniency, the platform Aave also allows you to do this. Now I can come here and I can supply USDC. Note that USDT no longer shows here in the list because it's no longer an asset that I hold in my wallet. And since I'm signed in, Aave knows all about it, right? So I'm gonna go click supply. I'm gonna go click max or you just input the amount of USDC or other tokens that you wanna supply. Now I gotta approve to continue because I never supplied USDC here with this wallet. So I'm gonna first need to approve, click sign, confirm, and now I'm able to supply. So I'm gonna click supply USDC. Let me close this. Again, I need to confirm this in my wallet, sign, confirm. All done, I supplied this amount of USDC. Now you see that my supplies are showing here, APY. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to borrow against these funds, this USDC that I just deposited. So this is the first step. In order for us to borrow, although there's no KYC and you can get a loan in a matter of minutes, you do need to supply some collateral and the collateral is the assets that you deploy. I'm already earning yield on this one, okay? I will be earning this 4.3% APY which is the weighted average of APY for all supplied assets, including incentives. So if I wanna borrow against it, so you gotta go to the assets to borrow tab, which is on the right side of the screen. And here on the assets to borrow tab, you will see that there's going to be also different APYs. This is what you will be needing to pay for your loan, okay? So this is the interest. Variable interest rate will fluctuate based on the market conditions. That's also something you need to pay attention to. And I can see here that I have available $37 to borrow against my USDC. And I could borrow any of these assets. I could borrow Bitcoin, BNB, USDT, USDC, Ethereum, Cake, maybe FD, USD. From all of the assets available for me to borrow, I will be able to get a loan in dollars worth $37.09. Now, if I would want to borrow against my assets in the shape of stable coins as well, the best deal would be by borrowing USDT because the APY here will be lower. So I could go ahead, click borrow, and the higher your borrow is, the lower your health factor also you will be. They already show us this attention icon here. Borrowing this amount will reduce your health factor and increase risk of liquidation. So although I could borrow this amount, $37, if I go with a lower amount, like let's say 25, which is roughly half of what I deposited, my health factor now, it's 1.55 but I will still face liquidation if the value of this health factor goes below one. Again, my health factor will be better the lower my amount of borrowed funds will be. So you can see $10 brings my health factor to 389. If your health factor becomes too low, you can solve that by either giving back your loan or a percentage of it, or by depositing more USDC or whatever token you deposited, because you will have a higher amount of collateral and that will already influence the ratio of your health factor, okay? So let's say I wanna go ahead still and make a reasonable loan and I wanna loan half of my deposited amount. So I'm gonna go ahead, input 25, click borrow USDT. I will need to sign the transaction, confirm, and now, Borrowing USDT is done. Transaction completed. This token is now in my wallet. So let me show you. I'm gonna go here on Rabi. Let me see the assets here on the BNB chain. So here we have it, $25 on USDT BNB chain, which I just loaned. It took not even minutes, guys. The biggest chunk of time actually was just me looking through assets to borrow tab, finding the one stable coin with the lowest APY, that's the interest I need to pay in the future. And then boom, once I found that, I borrowed and in seconds, I got the money in my wallet. Now from here on, note that I could come here and supply once again USDT to the Aave markets. 
So this is already leveraging, okay? So this is going to be increasing my risk, but this is a strategy that has been ongoing for years in DeFi and it's called a loop strategy. You can keep on doing this and by doing so, you will increase your supplied assets, although you don't really own all of those because if I would supply this 25 now, these are assets that I would need to pay back to the platform. So I'm just showing you this so that you know that you can do that, but it's obviously not advisable. And also note, and this is a very important detail, the APY I will be getting as interest for supplying USDT is actually lower than the APY I will have to pay for borrowing these funds. So overall, this would be a bad deal. So of course, I'm showing this as an example, but if you are doing something like this, always try to find something that pays you more interest, which has a higher APY than the one that you have to pay when you are borrowing. So the supply APY should always be higher than the borrow APY. Otherwise, it's not going to be a good deal, like I said, because you will have to pay more for borrowing than you will receive for supply. Although this does increase my health factor because overall I will have supplied around $75 and I only took 25 of those as a loan. So I could go ahead and once again click approve USDT first because I haven't before with this wallet. I accept this in my Rabi wallet. Transaction complete. Now I'm going to go ahead and supply that. Confirm. Done. Once again I'm going to close this. And the reason why this is the loop it's because I can come here and you see that I can borrow against my loan once again. The max amount is going to be 30, but if I do that, notice that my health factor gets really close to one, okay? So again, very important. We are playing with leverage whenever we are doing this looping strategy, but you get an idea of the potential of the platform. Essentially, I started by depositing 50, but now I have $75 in the shape of stablecoins earning yield for me. And also do bear in mind that at any point in time, I can come here and withdraw. So let me show you, you're not locked in for any amount of time. You are free to take your funds, move them elsewhere, take them back into your wallet whenever you want. Again, one of the reasons why DeFi is the financial revolution. So if I wanna undo all of this that I just did, come here, withdraw, click max, withdraw USDT, accept in my wallet, confirm, done. So now you see that I have your borrows here, USDT 25, so I'm gonna repay this, 25 max, so I'm gonna return all of this to the market, I'm gonna repay USDT, sign in, confirm, done. Just took seconds. You can see here there's still a small depth that I do need to pay because I just borrowed these funds and once you borrow your debt starts accruing right and now I'm gonna hit repay but the thing is I don't have USDT in my wallet to repay the debt but I can use collateral so the assets that I deposited in the shape of USDC so here I'm gonna hit max which is all the amount that I am in debt and that debt will be paid with USDT so I'm gonna first need to approve to continue and this will be something you also will be needing to do always sign those approvals if it is the first time you're interacting with the market with that wallet. All right, so you see here, repay USDT. Now I'm gonna go sign and accept the transaction in my wallet once again. Okay, all done. And now nothing left is here under my borrows tab. Now, if I wanna take my USDC out of this market, simply withdraw how much you, you wanna withdraw, a portion, maybe everything, it's up to you. Click withdraw, once again, sign and confirm. So let's sign and confirm, transaction created. Boom, just like that. This is how you can use borrowing lending protocols guys this is a hundred percent passive income on your stables on your bitcoin on your bnb ethereum whatever crypto is accepted here as an asset to supply you can go ahead earn yield on it a hundred percent passive you have full control over your assets all right guys this is just an example how you can borrow and lend funds with these decentralized protocols Ave is a big one, it's a reputable one, operates in a plenty of blockchains. There's other strategies you can apply. For example, there are people who bank on Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana, whatever your favorite cryptocurrency is, but Bitcoin is the biggest one, so that's why I'm giving it as an example. They supply Bitcoin, they earn yield on it, they borrow against it, and by doing so, you're not selling Bitcoin. You're not getting taxed for capital gains. You are 
financing yourself through your own Bitcoin without needing to sell it. And then you can use that capital to go and deploy into liquidity pools. I show you how you can do that here on this channel and turn your Bitcoin into a loan that generates you passive income. So that's potentially also something that anyone can do. This is the magic of DeFi guys. How much ahead of traditional finance crypto is. This is why I think crypto is the future. Well, not just because of this, this is just one of the many examples that I do show you here in my channel. And also we are getting paid 4% APY here for supplying stable coins. Can banks really offer you this? Make sure you do loan responsibly, even if you're borrowing against Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, even though we are on a bull run, it's not unheard of, of having 30% pullbacks multiple times. Okay. I saw that happening in past cycles. So don't over leverage yourself with these loops. I do advise you to go at under 30% to be more on the safe side. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, guys. If you enjoyed this type of content, like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. Take care. Keep exploring crypto. I'll see you on the next one.